Welcome to the official catch up today. I've got Gregor McDonald of Heriot Watt University Football Club. I believe you're the captain there, Gregor. Am I right in saying that? Um, no, no, really. Um, it's kind of like co captain, I think, at the moment, as such. So, Harry Barclays is the official first team captain, but he was injured. So, I was given the captaincy, but now he's back. So, all right, okay. But it's good. It's good that. Uh, <laughs> it's still, <all> right. <laughs> still no bad luck. <laughs> how, how are you coping through this, mate? It's weird, uh, very weird, because I'm used to being out of the house like majority of the time, and now I've sort of been stuck in it all the time. It's very different, but I'm trying to get out and doing runs and stuff and helping out with like my mum and dad in the garden and that. So, yeah, it's just a bit strange. Yeah, yeah, I think it's tough. I mean, even for myself, I've been going. Uh, I can't say I've done really much exercise over the years, uh, but I've been <laughs> I've been even doing runs at you know like twelve o'clock at night sometimes just to. Uh, that's the same as me. I'm going out late as well. It's just, I know there's nobody really anyone out anyway, but at that time, it's just absolute dead. It's just weird. It's like being in a ghost town now. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. But I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not brave enough to post my times yet, but I've just got it for like wee 20 minute ones, eh? And just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I build it up. I, I, I'll wait until I, I get uh, decent decent numbers and then I'll, I, might, I might share them with the group sort of thing, eh? <laughs> But uh, aye, Gregor, obviously I've, I've spoke to a few of your former teammates, uh, uh, people, uh, y- the younger boys listening in, probably uh, mainly the Spartans will be a bit sick of me, uh, giving all the credit to Kelly Hart's under-20s, yeah. but um, you guys were brilliant last season, uh, what can you really say about that team that we haven't already said? No, I cheers for that, no we did, we had a really good season, um, I know all the boys have praised them, like us a lot, over the last couple of chats you've had with them, but there was just like a... I think everyone would agree there's a different feel about the team. Like it was like a togetherness from the start. Like obviously Gibby, Lee, Togs, and Crockett had to get the boys together uh, just from scratch. And everyone just seemed to gel straight away from our first session. And then I think that's why we had such a good season because everyone was pretty similar from the same backgrounds, same upbringing. So everyone wanted to win every game. We all wanted the best out of each other sort of thing. So everyone was pushing each other on and stuff. So... Yeah, it was a a proper different experience that season for me because I've never never had anything like that, especially just with the boys coming together and playing the way we did from like just literally the first session, the first game. It was just it was just really really good, like a really yeah. good season. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's where I started kind of watching development league, and I, I saw the quality that that team had and obviously that some of the boys like your, yourself are obviously first team at other clubs now and it's just great to see you all doing well and uh, mm-hmm. I, I, as I keep saying and I, I, yeah, I hope, hopefully uh, I know a few of the, Spart- the, the young guys at Spartans last season listening so hopefully they're not, they're not getting, too, me, uh, getting too annoyed at me hyping you up but uh, you were fantastic to watch and uh, you were a really good bunch of lads like. Yeah, no the, uh, everyone was I, everyone was a really good bunch together like, but to be fair, credit to Spartans, though, they had an unbelievable season as well. And I have spoke to a few, like, when we were on nights out or whatever, um, after. And uh, we still we still joke about that final game when they beat us 3-0. Which, I still get nightmares about it since I tripped up in the first two minutes and they got a goal. But I still go by that. The, the striker kicked my heels. So, but I think everyone else will say, no, it was me that tripped up. But, um, yeah, no, they were a really good team. And, I mean, I think they won... Four four cups and the, the league final, I think, and we just won the one trophy. But we won our league anyway, unbeaten. So, no, it was a really good competition with them as well, though. I think the, the both games we played, it could have went either way, apart from that last one. I think we just, I don't know, something went wrong anyway. But yeah, yeah, and I was at that game as well. It was, uh, it was, you know, it was good to see all the all the like both teams, as you say. Obviously, Spartans deserve a lot of credit too. I'm a, yeah. Again, I'm probably a wee bit more biased with you guys because I'd seen seen you uh, a lot more than Spartans. But uh, I, uh, it just shows you the quality uh, some of the boys at, at even development football. I've seen a, a few guys this season. Um, you know, it's a, pre- predominantly sort of civil service strollers. I was really impressed with them uh, when I saw them. Yeah, no, like the under the tw- under twenty. That was the first season I played in that development league uh, with Kelty. Uh, so first and last, but I think it set me up really well for going into first team that season. Like it's more like the quality of football is like really high and I sort of like fast paced. Whereas when you get to like first team, it's maybe more a bit more like physicality wise yeah. and stuff you have to improve on. But yeah, it does set you up really well for going into a first team and stuff. So yeah, 
And uh, what's your background, Gregor? Are you like what? Sort, how did you sort of get to Kelly? So well. I only started playing football when I was 10, and since then, till about 17, I've only played um, sort of just like local boys' club sort of football. And I played with Oakley Juniors actually for about half a season when I was 17, uh, which was a good experience to get first team sort of junior football. And then that's when I started, I went to uni. So when I first did at uni, I, I sort of thought I'm going to try and get in the Harriet Watt football team. Mm-hmm. So I signed, I signed for them, and um, I played in the first team uh, for that full season. I sort of just Towards the end of it, about March time, I sort of just lost confidence in myself and I ended up leaving. And after that, it was when I got in contact with Gibby and Lee, who were setting up obviously Kelly at the time, and we had a meeting. And as soon as I sort of had that meeting, then I thought, yeah, that seems like the right sort of choice for me for next season. Because obviously it's only 10 minutes up the road for me as well. Yeah. Um, and I'd watched Kelly first team quite a few times. And I just sort of liked the environment around the team and like you see how many people come to watch them and that. So... Yeah, just sort of, that's how I ended up joining them, so. Yeah, and uh, I remember that game against Hill of Beef down at uh, Beef High School, and there I think it was about 400, I think 400 oh, or yeah. people there. That was, that was brilliant for uh, youth football. Yeah, that was some turnout. I mean, um, I think the first time we played them was at R, but was at Kelty, and there was a good, I think, 200-odd folk there, but then at Beef High, that was, uh, that was something else. Especially just being on that wee Astro, it felt like, you couldn't even, you could barely play on the pitch. If it ran off the side, they're going to run into someone or something like that. But no, it was a really good turnout for an under 20s game. And uh, moving on to sort of where you are now, Harry, what uni, obviously, you did, uh, I believe you had offers during the summer uh, and you had trained with a few teams. But uh, what sort of made you return to Harry, what was it just something that you, you wanted to do or, or did you feel you had a wee bit of unfinished business there? Yeah, like I kind of, I think I didn't leave on the the best of terms uh, before I went to Kelty because I just, well, I did, I did like lose sort of like interest in football for a wee bit, but I didn't expect to join a team as quickly as I did with Kelty, so I felt I'm a bit unfair on Harry what on that sort of side of it. But yeah, um, I had I was training with Hutchie and I done a wee bit with Spartans as well, and they both teams were unbelievable, like great training sessions, good managers. Uh, good setups for both the teams, and um, obviously Hutchie have shown that this season they're doing really well. I think the top of the league um, just now, anyway, whether it will finish or not. But um, yeah, and I just uh, the Spartans team were sort of like, yeah, I think maybe a wee bit more development of first team football. And I was I was being in contact with Beach throughout the whole time, mm-hmm. even when I was at Kelty as well, just like sort of keeping in contact, making sure everything's all right. But I went back and trained and just felt. It just feels right to sort of be back at Harriet Watt, especially me being at uni there. It sort of makes things easier for me doing like studying at the uni and then going to training and stuff after. So, yeah, and I, I felt I've def, I think I've made the right decision going back, hundred percent. I'm yeah. enjoying it a lot more as well. Yeah, that's good. That's good to hear, mate. And obviously, you've probably got like loads of football on your hands with the box as well as uh, the east of Scotland as well. Yeah, I know. I had I did have that in first year as well, but I just I can't remember it as being as much as what it was this year. Like it does, it does kind of get the better of you at some points because you feel like in games towards like the last sort of half an hour, your your legs are getting heavy and you don't feel as you can put as much effort in. But the box is actually it is really good, and we have we won the league, so it was quite a successful season on that that part of it. So it was good. Fourth at the moment um, behind uh, Hutchie Vale, Leaf, and Dunny Pace. So you're actually, you know, in fairness, there's a, a fair fair decent few teams in there. Uh, you're actually doing really well. Yeah, from the from the league, it does. Uh, we we have done pretty well. I mean, I think we've played more games than everyone else. But there was, a, I think it was maybe like a within the last sort of five games we played there, the first three. If we won those three, we'd have been, I think, right at the top, um, competing in the league. And we we thought there were games that we should have we should have won, but obviously, sadly, we missed out by maybe a couple of goals or like a last minute goal. Um, and if we won those games, I think we would have been about maybe three or four points off the top and then we still have would have uh, Hutchie and Lee to play as well who are top, at the top so I think if we just won those games I think me personally I thought we would have ended up winning the league I just believed in the quality that we had and that we would have won the league but sadly it didn't go like that and we've kind of eased off a bit from the top so Yeah and uh, there, there's a couple of boys that I know from Heriot Watt uh, other than yourself I think uh, does Tyler Huxford play, play with us? 
Yeah, he does. Yeah, Tyler, he was at Tyne Castle. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. I, I remember seeing him uh, a wee bit last season. How are, how are, like, how he's all getting on? I take it the development's really good. Oh, aye, yeah. Aye, everyone's getting on. Like, Tyler was probably one of the first ones uh, when I went when I went back to Terrible, who like sort of came up and because the, the team changes a lot. So when there wasn't many boys since I left that were still there because obviously when you finish uni, some people go away to work and work for the way. But he was one of the first boys that came up and sort of like introduced himself and welcomed them to the team. But from the first training session, the boys just seemed to gel together. It, was, it has been pretty similar to Kelty, if I'm being honest, the way the sort of team plays, how everyone's like sort of together and this and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the coaching and everything... It's just the exact same as what I've had at, at Kelty, just the high level, high intensity, and everyone everyone wants to play football and wants to win, so there's a good environment around the club. Yeah, that's excellent, man. And, uh, how are you actually finding it east of Scotland? Is it, is it difficult? Obviously, like to yourself, you've kind of, you've had uh, decent development, but are, are all the players the same in terms of heading at water? Are they just guys that are just, you know, basically in there for, for uni or...? No, I'd say everyone's sort of kind of in the same boat. I mean, there's like a mix of students and boys who do work, like obviously not at uni, just doing full-time job. But like uh, the the quality in the team's there, like 100%. We play like ex- pretty much exactly what like Kelty wanted to play, like passing out for the back, um, trying to win the ball back as soon as possible. But obviously it's, it's different because you're playing against people who are more experienced, like maybe not as good quality, but they're just like, they know what to do when the ball comes to them. They know who's running past them. They have all that awareness about them, yeah. which is maybe the part that we're sort of lacking. Maybe like the desire to go and win that and going up for headers and winning 50-50s, all that sort of stuff. So I think if we improve on that for next season, I don't see why we can't win that league yeah. and get into the Premier one. And I, and I was mentioning, obviously, like Salovey and Fissel Hutchie Vale, they've, they've got a really decent team uh, a, a few guys that have obviously had experience higher up as well uh, so they're, yeah. they're they obviously they're I think looking at the teams that were in that league I would say they're probably where I thought they would have been uh, right at the top yeah I mean I, when I was in, in training with them you could see that there was a lot of quality in, but at the same time I say that we played them I think it was like one of the, the fifth game of the season or something like that and we beat them 3-1 at Stockton as well mm-hmm. um, so like obviously from that uh, the the history that Hutchie have had and sort of the quality in their team that's when I thought I think our team could actually go and win this league um, but no you can see from Hutchie's results and whatnot they've caught they've just sort of been beating everyone it'd be really interesting to actually watch them play against Lee and yeah. see what their score yeah. would have been but yeah yeah that's brilliant Gregor and uh, I keep asking people this obviously but what were your thoughts on you know the West of Scotland maybe uh, possible chance of playing West West of Scotland teams next season? No, I think it's I think it's really good. Hopefully if it, uh, it all goes ahead because you hear a lot about like the teams through in the West of like the high quality um football they've played and like I know people from uni as well, some that are through from that way. And they talk about the teams that play that way, like ones that are junior obviously planning on to go to this West of Scotland. And they just say they're unbelievable and whatnot. So it'd just be a good challenge and different journeys in that for the team as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it goes ahead and we can have some new teams to play and stuff. Yeah, well, from what I've heard, that there's certainly going to be a, a lot of them. I think uh, East of Scotland had three conferences last season, I believe. Um, yeah. The West of Scotland's going to have four, so it's going to be a massive. Oof. It's it's going to be a lot of teams, but Aye. I am personally hoping that there's going to be some sort of interleague cup. Yeah, I'd, I'd be brilliant, obviously. And who do you support, Gregor? If you don't mind me asking. Um, well, to be fair, I've actually I don't really watch too much uh, football in Scotland, but obviously I'd support them fair much, my local team. Um, but yeah, I don't actually I, I don't like to admit it, but I generally don't watch that much Scottish football on TV or that. I'm not really a big fan of like Rangers, Celtic, or any of the big teams. I just kind of stay away from that. To be honest, I just usually watch like the Premier League in England and. Champions League and that. That's what I'm really interested in watching football. So yeah, yeah. When I was younger, I used to I used to watch all the football I can. But now I'm kind of limit. I just limit it to the teams I support, eh? Because you know, I I think like what well, you mentioned. Like, sometimes you can get a wee bit jaded with it all if you're watching football all the time and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I definitely. And uh, just finally, Gregor, um, what do you think should happen 
uh, I always ask people this. It's always probably the toughest question. I leave it till last. But have you got any thoughts on what should happen if uh, football can continue? I don't. I don't know. It's tough because well, obviously the position at Harry Water, and it's like we can't really win the league, but we're not going to get like relegated or anything like that. So for me, it's it's not as big a deal. But I can understand if you've got like, for instance, like Bonnie Rig, who are really close to Kelty, and I think they still got to play each other again in the league and. Like, as it is with everything in football, anything can happen. So it's for teams like that that they will obviously want to start again, like, um, start where we left off. But I just can't, I can't see it happening. I just think they'll have to call it as it is. Because, yeah. like, teams like, like, for instance, in Liverpool, like, Liverpool's position, like, they've won the league pretty much. You may as well give it to them. But then you've got teams who are battling for relegation. But um, as I said, a few, a few people have been talking about it, like, there's been whatever 30 odd games or however many games that you've played already this season and you're at the bottom of the table. So if in 30 games you're at the bottom of the table, then why should another eight, you should be allowed another eight or whatever for the rest of the season to then try and get up? Like for Hearts, Hearts point of view or whatever, because they've been at the bottom of the league for like the majority of the season or whatever. So, but I mean, everyone's got different opinions on it by the, the sounds of it. So that's a, that's a weird one. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of similar to, to you, Gregor. I, I think, uh, I don't know if football is going to continue, and the longer it takes, it's it's the more unlikely it's going to be able that the guys can exactly, play these yeah. games. So now in void would be disappointing in the the fact that like it might render everything meaningless. But I just think that's the fairest way. I don't see how how fair it would be relegating like Seville leaving in the Lowland or or Kelly and how close they are with Bonnie Rig. Um, it's it's too it's too tough to call. I think. Yeah, and no, it has hundred percent. But I, you just don't know how long it's going to go on for with this thing, eh? So I think they've got to make a decision soon because you don't want teams sitting about waiting and waiting and waiting, and then by the time it gets to like August or whatever, and we're going to start the new season. It's like, how's that going to work then? Like, we're going to have to start like the new season in December or something and catch up again, or it's just a, it's a confusing one. Well, thanks for uh, coming on and chatting, Greg. I really appreciate it. It's good to obviously catch up with the. That, that team last season I, I'm going to yeah. hopefully speak to Craig Richardson and it'll be a funny chat like uh, no that'll be something else uh, <laughs> might not make much sense him like but <laughs> I'm uh, yeah I've, I've had a few digs at him uh, over over the the course of doing this uh, you know he's he always used to moan about not giving him enough credit when he had nothing to do for 90 minutes so <laughs> oh aye. aye but nobody really cares too much about goalies anyway so <laughs> yeah, cheers sure. for having me on I appreciate that yeah, mate, uh, stay safe, all the best, and, and good luck. Uh, hopefully I can, I say this to most of the teams, I don't know how plausible it will be, but hopefully I can come and see Harry at Watt at some point uh, next season. Yeah, no worries, I Hopefully we can get you along and watch a few of our games. That'd be good.